land from newly acquired air bases on England's threshold comes something new to warfare, new to history. An attempt to pound the world power into submission by bombardment from the sky. Coolly and brilliantly, the English organize their defenses, meeting the new menace with new methods. But the Nazi squadrons come over around the clock. Caring not how she expends her blood, sweat, and tears, England stands firm. Hitler does not force her to her knees. A democratic people wins the Battle of Britain. But for Britain's leaders, the situation remains desperate. If freedom is to survive in the old world, the new world will have to act. In America, public opinion is slowly surely forming. The issues are becoming clear. Congress moves boldly to safeguard American security by forthright aid to Great Britain. The British Navy needs destroyers, needs them badly. America has many left over from World War I. Stop-gap strategy in the Battle of the Atlantic calls for an exchange of destroyers for British bases in the Caribbean and the Atlantic. Step by step, America begins forging her armor. The absolute necessity for naval strength is demonstrated by Britain's plight. America needs not one, but two navies. One to guard the Atlantic, the other to counter aggression in the Pacific. The shipyards begin working treble ships. Merchantmen, warships, auxiliaries begin sliding down the ways in increasing tempo. All out production becomes the gold throughout the land. The pace of preparedness quickens. by themselves are no longer enough. From coast to coast, the barracks go up by the thousands to receive draftees by the hundreds of thousands. Far off areas become vital to the United States. Greenland lies at the crossroads of the North Atlantic. In May of 1940, she asked United States protection. Her creolite mines and weather stations are denied the Germans. American Marines move into Iceland a year later, relieving the British garrison there. The Leathernecks forestall the German threat. Whoever possesses Iceland holds a pistol pointed at England, the United States, and Canada. Churchill and Roosevelt meet off Newfoundland to proclaim the Atlantic Charter. The four freedoms. Freedom of speech and of worship. From want and from fear. But these are the realities that support the ideals. The ships, the men, the supplies on which all depend. 
the ships plod along the North Atlantic convoy routes at dangerously sluggish speed, their pace regulated by the slowest merchantman in the convoy. And the slower the convoy, the easier it falls into the trap of roving U-boats. course to Europe lies across the North Atlantic. Concentrated here is the flow of Allied ships and enemy submarines. While convoys are underway, Royal Canadian control centers keep them instructed and informed on the basis of coordinated intelligence. protection is weak, the menace grave. Around the rim of the convoy, the escort vessels keep station, herding the merchantmen toward their destination. In September 1941, the United States Navy joins the British and Canadians in protecting the convoys half their way across the Atlantic. American sailors are in the shooting war, though their country is not. convoy's course and speed and relay the information by radio to German naval headquarters on the French coast. Admiral Dönitz, the genius of German submarine warfare, orders his submarines out for the kill. U-boats in the area of the convoy are alerted and directed to an assembly point where they coordinate into a unified striking force known as a wolf pack. The pack rendezvous for the attack. convoy is on guard. Sonar, as Dick as the British call it, sends a sound wave into the depths, searching for a return echo from the enemy. All hands on all ships are alerted in these dangerous waters where sinkings are routine. Contact. Too late.
battle is over. Home are the victors, home safely from the sea. They have brought England a little closer to starvation, closer to defeat. Triumph and glory are theirs. to their capital, Berlin, for further celebration. The victories against England proved to the Germans the invincibility of the Third Reich. All Germany rejoices. All Germany honors its undersea sailors. States enters the war. The bottom of the Atlantic is a formidable cemetery of Allied ships. But there are no tombstones in the sea. Only the drifting remnants of disaster. Thank you.